to you tonight. Turn to Matthew chapter 16, please. Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16, and we'll start reading at verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Heavenly Father, thank you for this passage of scripture that we have regarding the church. Thank you for the foundation that we have of Jesus Christ in this place, and the church of Jesus Christ. Bless now this time to our benefit. May we rejoice in what you have given us in this place. But, Father, most of all, for the rock that we all stand upon, the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. We ask us in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, what's so good about church? What's so great about church? Pardon me is, is the title. What's so great about church? I love church. I've been in church literally since birth. Uh, the first week of my life I was in church. My dad was a pastor. So I... Uh, my parents took me to church. I think they just wanted to get an extra one on the attendance that day. And uh, so anyway, I don't remember exactly what they did, but I've been in church all my life. What's so great about church? Why do you love church? Sunday school. Amen? I've been in Sunday school all my life. And uh, I'm still in Sunday school. And... It's easier to attend Sunday school than it is to teach Sunday school. Amen. And um, but we have a good good group of adults. Now on the other side of the coin, I could be teaching teenagers, which is, then would be a total impossibility. Um, but no, thank you so much for those that teach all of the classes. We just have tremendous, tremendous Sunday school teachers that just have given their hearts to it. It just amazes me at the efforts that our Sunday school teachers make and uh, the heart they have for it, and children that get saved in their Sunday school classes. It's just uh, astounding, uh, the wonderful work that's being done by the teachers of the Sunday school classes. And uh, so I love Sunday school. Boy, don't miss Sunday school. If you're home tonight watching on TV, but don't miss Sunday school. Get here for Sunday school. It's a great time together, a good time to learn the Bible. It's a different dynamic than any other service in that we just teach the Word of God. And uh, we got it for every age you can imagine. And uh, we'll even watch the kids while you come. But boy, be faithful to Sunday school. And I know the Sunday night crowd, you guys were all here in Sunday school, many of you participating in making it happen. I love church, singing the songs of God. I don't remember learning most of the songs in the, in, the, in the song book. They just, I was so little. They just, learning songs over the years, I have no idea. I would assume it's probably in the thousands how many songs that I would know. It's just, you learn songs all the time. And it's just a wonderful thing. I love the music of church. I, um, I, to say I'm not a fan of contemporary Christian music would be a monumental understatement. I would be on the other side of the end of that spectrum. I can't imagine changing the gospel music that we have and uh, making something different out of it. I so love the music of the songbook and the music that we know as Christians and believers that you pass down. It's just uh, a wonderful thing for your children to learn the songs 
of the, uh, in the songbook and the choruses of Sunday school, such a valuable, valuable thing that you'll never, you'll never, um, you'll never regret having your children learn gospel music and having those songs in your heart. You realize that you never forget a song. It's, it's just quite an amazing thing. Um, you just don't forget songs. They will stick in your mind. You may forget a word or who to, or who to hear. If you stand up in front of a crowd, you forget almost everything. But, but it, you, just, you just can keep a song. My father had just advanced dementia and just did not hardly speak. But we'd take him to a church at First Baptist, and he'd stand up, and I'd watch his lips. And it's like he is singing the song. And I've told you about Ray Bordway, our, our choir director um, and song, congregational song leader. And many of you, how many know who I'm talking about Ray Bordway? You've seen him before. Many of you have. But he was, oh, my goodness, Ray Bordway was at First Baptist. I think he was there before Brother Hiles came and was a song leader for many years. Brother, Brother Ray, likewise, um, got the mention. And um, I asked his wife. We had done some recording, recordings down at Faith Music, and I asked his wife, I said, can he still sing? And she said, oh, yeah, he can still sing. I said, can we take him down to Faith Music down in Evansville and, and have him record some songs that you guys, just, just the songs that you guys recorded? And she said, oh, no, he, can, he can't do that. He said he remembers it, but he just, he just starts crying almost immediately. He'll just start singing, and he'll, he'll just start crying. And so... I said, well, let us try. In my mind, I'm thinking we can piece it together, right? You know, we can, we can get a, maybe a verse in or a half a verse, and, you know, maybe he'll break down. And, of course, he doesn't realize. But, and I thought, but in a studio, you could piece it together. So I said, let us try. You just hate, hate for us to lose the, the voice of Ray Bordway. And so she, she said, no, I, I, I would love to do it. I would just love to have something of his, but we just, there's just no way he could ever do it. So anyway, I wrote Brother Hiles a note, and I said, I want to take Ray Bordway. So then I got a note back from Brother Hiles um, that he had sent me a copy of that, that was across the face of the note that I had written to Mabel. It said, I want you to do this. So anyway, we got Ray Bordway down there. If you've been in a studio, the one there specifically, which we like very much, is the piano is in a separate room. It's glass, so you can see it, but the grand piano is in a, in a, a sealed room, that, so it's not leaking over your microphone that you're recording on. Does that make sense to you? So you're not getting double piano. So the piano was being recorded singularly without being on your mic. So he's over there, so we went into the piano room, and so I thought, well, let's just run through a, a verse of it, and then we'll just walk right through the door, right into the studio, and he'll, he'll, we'll just lay it down. We're there, I'll guess what happened. We walked in that, that side room, and we started trying to, try to get a song. I mean, he instantly, I, I, don't, I don't think we got a phrase of a song, and as he started crying, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, boy, she's right. And so we, we tried several times. He just couldn't do it. He, was, he just couldn't, couldn't get through anything in there. And I said, well, let's just go. And so we just walked through, and I said, let's go in the studio, and let's just, let's just, try, let's just try it in the studio. Put him in front of a microphone. He and his wife rolled off ten songs. Bang, 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 bang. Just one right after another. It just, just literally, just to perfection. I mean, we did very little, very little editing to it, and uh, just rolled off just the classics that Ray and Mabel Boardway had sung. It just sounded like him as he always did. I don't know if God just gave grace for a few minutes or what happened there, but you know what? In spite of the fact that he couldn't speak to us, couldn't communicate with us, he rolled off songs and sounded just like Ray Bordway always sang. Music is an amazing, amazing thing. Why do I love church? Because I love music, the music of God, music that will stick in your heart even when your mind is weak. You will remember the songs of God and can sing the songs of God. I think it's intentional on God's part to leave us the great gift of music. My wife follows Patch the Pilot pirate very carefully ron hamilton and uh shelly hamilton just this week posted something where ron hamilton was he was he laying in bed or something he was laying in bed and they were playing one of his recordings and he was he was leading it and singing it from in bed and uh, his his mind is just completely um if you follow him at all his his mind is just gone and doesn't doesn't sing much at all but here he was laying in the bed and just uh, singing and, and, and leading as if it was, it was it was a mixed group and he was singing with them and leading them. 
Folks, learn the songs of God. I, I appreciate so much in New Christians you're, and you're singing and, and learning songs. And I know it's difficult to learn new songs that you don't know, but you'll get them. And that's such a blessing to pass on in your family is the music of God. And just such a delight to have music in our lives. Why do I love church? I love Sunday school. I love singing songs of God. Boy, isn't it wonderful to have a choir. Pastor Nelson, thank, how many years have you been leading choir? 21 years. 21 years leading choir. And uh, just what a blessing it is to have a choir here at Gospel Light. And I've been so blessed by the choir over the years and uh, an opportunity to sing with them as well. And it's just um, a delightful thing to hear a church choir. And I was at Emmanuel. Folks would walk in and they'd say, we hear you have a choir. Is that true? I said, yeah. Oh, okay. We're just, I'm just tired of church where I'm going. I don't know any of the songs. I've been in church for 40 years. I don't know any songs anymore. How did that happen? And we don't have a choir. And so they would come to church just because they wanted to hear a choir sing once again. Thank you, choir, for all the practice time you put in. Love special music. It's such a delight to hear the specials. Boy, tonight, that was a beautiful trio. Just you guys blend like nobody's business. That was fantastic. And, of course, Amanda always intimidates all of us with that voice, doesn't she? That's just amazing. Always strong, wonderful. Thank you for the dedication of the singers of this church. Hearts and, and talent mixed together in love for God and communicating to us beautiful, beautiful music. The preaching of God's word. Oh, I can't even imagine how many messages that I've heard preached in my life. You think I'd be a better Christian, Ryan? All the messages I've heard all my life, but it's an amazing thing. The preaching of God's word over long spans of time in our lives, as we've heard men of God over our lives. I love an invitation when people come, and we see those decisions that are made at the altar, and sometimes as this morning in the pew, and people trusting Christ as their Savior. I love the fellowship of church. What a delight it is to have Christian friends. Amen. Boy, this is not about me, but there's there's no place like Gospel Light. I don't think I, every church is unique. But just what a what a great group of Christian people. If you you're new to Gospel Light Baptist Church, you're gonna you're gonna find a great group of people to be involved with. The kind of people you want to make your friends. The kind of people you want to hang with. The kind of people you want praying for you. And it's just a delightful, delightful place to be. And. Uh, yeah, this, it was great to, it's great to see the church growing. Younger families, we love so much that you're here. And um, I, because I realized, primarily because the pastor's young, that you like it here. And uh, Well, some of the pastors are young. Uh-oh. Oh, but well, what a good time of fellowship we have here at Gospel Light. It's not the main thing, but sure is enjoyable to have Christian friends that we... Um, can enjoy being with and, and fellowshipping together and enjoying things together. We didn't get much baseball in this last time, but it was a Cardinal, so it was no great loss. And uh, the top golf, top golf was fun. That was that was very fun. So we had we had a great time. Why? Because we, I don't know. We we're just with people we wanted to be with, and uh, spending time together was 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 the fun of the fun of the the trip. I just, someone said to me after that we got back and. I said, you know, even though the game, I forget who it was, said, even though we didn't get to go to the game, this was a great trip, wasn't it? And I said, yes, it was. It had a great time with the men of Gospel Light Baptist Church. And what a core ladies that are just hardworking, unbelievably hardworking ladies, constantly, constantly working in all these many, many meals and things that we have going on here. And, oh, my goodness, and decorations and just a wonderful place. If you're not a member, you need to be a member. If you're not here tonight and you you're belonging to some other church, just ditch that place and come over here. Just be done with it. So anyway, now hopefully all those folks are in church tonight, their own churches, right? <laughs> love this church. I just love church. So many things about church that I love. It has lost its stature in some ways. It's not as respected as it should be, and I'm not necessarily blaming churches for that, but our country is, has lost its respect for God, and in so doing, they've lost their respect for church. 
and in so many ways that's hurting our country. Believe it or not, young people, when I was a boy, there was nothing open on Sundays. I'm not kidding. There was nothing open in our town. You just, um, it was a day of rest. America saw it as a day of rest and businesses were closed. And uh, the only things I think were open probably back in the day, perhaps, I, I don't remember for sure, but we had men in our church that worked in the auto industry. I don't remember them working on Sundays though, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But I don't recall them working Sundays. Things just shut down on Sunday. Why? Because our nation had respect for the Lord and respect for church. And now, my goodness, you know, the little league teams and soccer teams and on and on it goes, they're all on Sundays. And we never, never, never did they used to do that. Um, people didn't, didn't do that at all on Sundays. I don't know if football was kind of the first thing that cracked, cracked that. Um, it, was, it was football games on Sunday. Um, we, we, uh, we grew up, we couldn't watch TV on Sunday. After church on Sunday night, we could watch TV, but we couldn't watch it on Sunday. It wasn't worth watching anyway. We had those little arm, those little things you pulled out, and it was all snowy anyhow. But uh, just why? Because my parents wanted us to honor the Lord on Sunday. We had to wear our suit pants all day. We could go out in the front yard, and we could play catch, but we could not uh, run. Uh, we could just play catch, but no, no running. We had to wear our, like I say, we had to wear our, our dress pants. And um, we knew if we got something out of dress pants, it was because, you know, honestly, I'm not complaining, but we just had one pair of dress pants. And then m most of the older folks would account to that, attest to that. And uh, so you, you couldn't get them messed up. Sunday was special and our, our nation has, has diminished it so much. And it has not been to the benefit of our country, to be sure. I love church. What's so great about church? Christ is the rock. The church is built upon. We sing the song on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Truly, he is the rock of our salvation, but he's the rock of the church. He is the head of the church. Can you imagine to be part of something that God himself has established and his son Jesus Christ is the foundational piece of it and the head of the church? What a delight it is to be of something of that stature there's nothing else you can belong to like a church there's nothing else you're going to do in life that will have the value in the investments that you make in church especially of your time honestly this is a generous church but the, the the money that you give to the church and the ministry and the work of god honestly is the best investment you're going to make in your life i'm not trying to get more money into the church i'm just saying that's the best place to put your money i mean god's dividends are are way beyond what you're ever going to see here on earth so what a great place to invest in the church of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, the rock was referencing to God and was common for the Jews to reference him. In Psalms 18.2, David said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress. Psalms 18.3, For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? Deuteronomy 32.4, He is our rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. In Peter, I'm sorry, in Matthew chapter 16 here, we have Peter, and we see that he is saying to Peter, let's see here, uh, verse number 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, oh, let me back up a verse. He said, but whom say ye that I am and Simon Peter said answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon Barjona for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven and I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so on the rock is Jesus Christ. He is the rock. I'll explain in a minute, Peter, but Jesus Christ is the rock. And he says, I'll build my church on the rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Do you understand that we're guaranteed that, that Satan cannot, cannot destroy this church? The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. He may attack, but he will not prevail. We may have to fight, but he won't prevail. 
And so we, we have this promise from God. The church that is founded on the head, Jesus Christ, cannot be defeated by the powers of Satan. That's why you want to be a member of a church. Now, just attending a church is, is, is a great thing, but, but committing yourself to a church and being a member of a church is a, is a wonderful thing. Why? Because it, you're, you're building your life on the rock. You're building your life on Jesus Christ and his church. And so it's such an important thing that you do that and you put your, uh, just, just live your life in church. I, um, I don't know how many days I have left. I, I numbered them. I, Mag, I spoke a, a message on numbering your days, but I, I think I, I have, if I live to 75 or something, I've got like 3,000 days left or something, and the Bible says to number your days. But, you know, Pastor Nelson, I, I want to die going to church. You know, I don't mean on the way to church, but I mean, I, I, I still want to be in church when I die. I, uh, my father was pastoring his first church and was a new pastor took me to church at birth and and I don't have any reason that I want to let that change. I want to I want to build my entire life on the church. Young people, there's not a better place that is going to be protection for you than in the church. The world is going to seek to sway you to to push you into things that will destroy your life. But stay firm in the church. Our church is perfect. No. Is there times that probably some of you folks have been in, in churches and maybe the doctrine has changed or maybe some things have changed in the church that, that, are, that, are, that are unscriptural and, and perhaps you've had to make a change in churches? I don't know everybody's situations here. But sometimes that, that there is a necessity where churches veer off and, and they can start heading a different direction and, and you just don't have any choice but to stand, stand firm in what you believe and, and go, to a, go to a church immediately. Um, if you're looking for a church for two or three years, um, you're not looking very hard. Um, sometimes people say, well, I've been looking for a church for a couple years. Well, I don't know how many Baptist churches there are in town, but it seems to me like maybe four or five weeks, you'd pretty well have that out of the way. Now, I don't mean you've made a definite choice, but I mean, you have a pretty good idea where you're going to go in four or five weeks from the standpoint of checking out some churches and then and visiting back and then maybe, but I mean, within a span of, you know, a couple of months, I would think you could find a church that you finally whittled down. I mean, you go on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you've had a lot of opportunities to see what's going on in church. But this, this two or three years and I, well, I'm just, I've been looking for a church. Wow. I don't want to go with you to church because you're never in church. You're just still looking. And so if, if you're looking for a church, you know, I mean, do it diligently. If you're watching online, watch, do it diligently. Find a church and get in it and be a part of it. Um, don't just be sitting at home watching uh, church on TV all the time. And I'm not talking about people that are watching us online so much. But, if, you know, if, if you're watching online and you don't have a church, boy, get to this church. There's nothing like being in the service by comparison to watching it at home. Um, I doubt you have an altar in your home to where you're making a decision at the end of the message. I, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying it's not likely like you're going to make a decision in church when you've heard the message and had your heart prepared by the music and these things that, that have led you to follow the Lord in a decision you're making. And so it's so important to be in church. Jesus Christ is a rock and he's the foundation. And you'll find nothing else in life that is going to be a firm foundation like the church will be in your life. Raise your children in church. We have so many young children in this church. Boy, what a delight it is. Family, stay, stay diligent. Satan's going to try to draw you away from church. Um, your kid's going to got a, you're not going to get a fair shake in Sunday school or he's going to get in trouble. And you, and, and, you, know, you know how those junior church workers are. They're, they're so mean, and, and, you know, my kid is just, I'm just, I've had it with Junior Church. Pastor Joel is just a mean man. It was Trenton's fault. Uh, you know what? They told me that, actually. Uh, it was Trenton. But <laughs> uh, it was the grandfather of your children that told me that, but uh, no, I'm joking. But... Uh, I don't think Pastor Joel's got a mean moan in his body. If he does, I, I've never seen it. And I'm around him a little bit, too. 
But boy, boy, have your kids in church and build a foundation of your children being in church and learning the songs, learning the stories of Jesus and of the great stories of the Bible. Our Lord is our cornerstone. Don't leave the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's the chief cornerstone. I was going to get into Peter a little bit, but our time is short. I would say Christ, I mentioned he's a foundation in 1 Corinthians 3.11. It says, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation but Christ. Everything goes on top of the foundation. You're not going to find a deeper foundation that, that will ever be sturdy like the Lord Jesus Christ to build your life upon. There's no foundation like him. Trust him. Build your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. I have grandchildren here tonight. Grandchildren, build your life on Jesus Christ. Build your life on the Lord. You'll never regret it. It's a foundation that won't move. It's a foundation that you can always count on. It will always be there. The deeper the foundation, the larger the structure can be and will stand. A crooked foundation will become obvious the higher up you go. Put your, put your firm foundation on Jesus Christ and his church. Oh, I love church. Let's all stand together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for church. And Father, what a blessed day. Thank you so much, Father, that you would come to earth, lay down your life. And Father, so much that you have the power to take it back and to rise from the dead. And Father, because you have risen, because Jesus has risen, we too shall rise. Our faith is not in vain because our Savior is alive and he is well and he is alive forevermore. Thank you that we have a foundation that you have left us, the church, built upon your precious son that will never fail. God incarnate. May we draw closer to him, Father. Thank you for the body, the church, the individual members that make up the church. Father, thank you for the building, but Father, the building is, is worthless without people. It's what the building does. It houses the people of God, the church. Thank you for these faithful members. Continue to bless this church, God. You've been so good to us today, but God, you've just been so kind to us through COVID, through the storms of the derecho, Father, everything that's come our way, you have been so gracious to us. And we can't thank you enough for it. Jesus, thank you that you have built this foundational peace in our lives that we can trust. And Father, we can keep this foundation. It will never move. It will never be too weak. We can never get too strong that our foundation will not be stronger and greater. As we follow our Lord Jesus Christ, bless now this invitation of thy honor and glory. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen.